everyone. Good evening. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We have so much to do today, right? So me and Ashwara Mama are thinking that, you know, I hope that we are, we should not be some, un, you know, forgettable soul. We are not the ghost, everyone. Yes, we are still very, we are alive and we are very active also. Really sorry that we were not there with you for a long time. But here we are, everyone. And yeah, we can do a lot of things. Ta-da! Ta-da! You can guess what had happened. Something to do with the color and something to do with the magic of technology. So good evening everyone and welcome to 6, 7th and 8th, the 9th and 10th channel of Baiju's. I hope that you remember me especially to 6, 7th and 8th channel. I'm your teacher Ankita and we'll be calling Ashwarya ma'am also. And 9th and 10th, hello everyone. Good evening, you were meeting us a little bit very frequently for the past two weeks and we are happy. Yes, let's now call Ashwarya ma'am and ta-da ma'am. <laughs> Good evening everyone, good evening. So we wanted to, as they get us back to normal, we wanted to do a very uh, grand and memorable entry, something that you would remember us for a very long time, right? So now of course you will always remember how Ankita Vam popped up out of the screen like that and how she came and how her hands were there. Yes, all magic of technology. But we wanted to do some me memorable thing. Some of you like, I'm scared. How is it? As biology students, we keep seeing different parts of the body. And as a matter of fact, it was pretty jaw-dropping, right? When you saw Ankita Ma'am like that. Which is why Ankita Ma'am and I are here today to talk about 10 jaw-dropping biology facts. So that was our intent all the time. Now, as you all know, right? As they make us small and get us all adjusted, adjusted here. here. So mainly let us tell you that we are live on both the channels. We are live on both 6 to 8 as well as 9 and 10. So this is across grade. Yes. And ma'am, very simple class today where we are going to tell them some things that they know, some things that they don't know as well, right? Yes. So everyone, welcome to the class and as ma'am told, we will be discussing something about, uh, about of course, about our biology and that's something really very interesting. So everyone get ready. This class is a very small Sweden class. We'll be just quickly discussing some of the important facts, right ma'am? Yes. So ma'am, let's get started. Yes, we'll get started very quickly. But everybody, before we get started, for all of you out there, now for those of you who know us and who've been very regular on the channel, of course, they know that we do crazy things. But now if you're very new to our class and probably the first time you're thinking, who are these two teachers? What are they doing? Why have they come without... Only hands and head, right? Yeah. And now there's one more teacher coming in with all this, I will say, energy and enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> so who are we? We are mainly your biology teachers. We teach you biology. We also teach you social sciences as well. And today we will be making sure that throughout the next few weeks, we will give them a lot of, learn, help them learn a lot of new things. Yes. So, like, I know that your examinations are almost over, right? And of course, maybe here and there, a few examinations are there. But... We will make sure that we are helping you with that. Apart from that, we will be entering into the new sessions, right? And into the new academic sessions. So before that, right, we will have some interesting sessions that will be helping us to get ready for our next class. So everyone with that, I hope that all of you are super excited, super, super excited. Please make sure if you're new here on the channel, as ma'am mentioned, if you don't know who are we, my name is Ankita, ma'am name is Ashwarya. And if you want to stay with us, please make sure you the subscribe button join our classes because this is just the small small hint that what we'll be doing in the next academic year we have so much amazing stuff planned for them right ma'am yes of course so everybody please make sure that you are ready short and sweet class in half an hour we are going to learn about 10 jaw-dropping biology facts now before we get started how many of you love biology right how many of you love learning about the human body especially yes. everybody quick raise of hands in the live chat and for those of you who are watching this video much later i am sure that you tapped upon this video and you opened this video only because you love learning about biology yes. right so somebody is like most of them are like mom me many of them are like mom no okay it's okay me me, me. biology is biology is an emotion i'm with you Yes, definitely everyone. 
Awesome. Now some of you are saying we love physics. It's okay. We know you love biology also. Yeah. Right. So now, of course, everybody, if you have your love for biology, right? Biology is all about discovering, mom. It's yes. not about inventing here. Rather, I mean, there is invention as well, but there's a lot of discovery as yeah. well. Because if you, now if you look at the around us, around us throughout, and not just the humans inside our body, but outside, we have so many living organisms, and of course, we just barely know them. Still, the discoveries are happening. Yeah. Still, every day, I think not every day, every year, we come up with amazing research about the human body, how it works, how it functions. So, it's every day is a new day, right, ma'am? Yes. So here so, we are, so that we can inspire you, or you know, we can add some light, so that your love for biology should continue forever and ever. So let's get started. Yes. So now. How many of you? We'll start fact number one, ma'am, but with a very popular question, yeah. right? Something that we love doing. I know that I can say that with confidence. <laughs> How many of you love sleeping? Raise your hand, everyone. Yes. How many of you enjoy sleeping, ma'am? Sunday, especially Sundays are the days where you want to sleep in late, right? Because sometimes Saturday you might have school as well, right? How many of you love having Sunday time? I say full time sleeping. Not just Sunday, ma'am. I guess. <laughs> Whenever you get time, you're like, "Ha, ah, let's sleep." Yes. Lot of you are saying, "Mom, Friday, me, me, me." Oh my God! Everybody is now very excited, saying, "Mom, we love sleeping." Do you know what is the average duration we should sleep? Now there are days when we end up sleeping for ten hours, eleven yeah. hours. You know, you're just feeling very lazy. But how much time should you ideally sleep? What do you think? Not sleeping, but a power nap. Okay, very good. Very good, very good. Maths ka road map, you will have it. You will get it. Don't worry. It's already there on the channel, I think. Yeah, I think there were some changes, but now it will be posted again. I think yes. it was posted again. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I can see seven hours, eight hours, ma'am. What do you think? Nine to eleven hours. I like that. Very good. <laughs> eight to ten is a constant. Majorly, I think they're saying, ma'am, six to seven or to seven to eight hours. Yes. So you know that ideally humans sleep for six to eight hours. Anything more than eight hours is when we are being lazy. Yeah. Ma'am, do you agree to this? Yes, definitely, everyone. So this is an ideal time for us to sleep. Now, as of course, this one thing that you know, uh, for younger, when we are younger, we sleep for eight hours, right? We need that rest. Our body needs that repair. But of course, I'm sure as we get older and older, we will not get that enough sleep. That is also one thing. But when we are discussing about the sleep. If I give you an option of sleeping, let's suppose uh, 24 hours, ma'am, what do you think? Do you think we'll be able to sleep for 24 hours without doing anything? As much as we want to, right? As much as we want to, like I mean, there have been days. I'll be very honest. When maybe like you know, it's a holiday, like it's a Sunday, or you know, I I like maybe if I'm on leave or something like that. I'll be on the bed, but of course, as you all know, we'll not sleep throughout, yeah. right? There's going to be periods of time when you are awake. You do walk around a little. We cannot yeah. be on bed as humans, right? Yes. Most of us. I mean, ma'am, can you sleep 24 hours a day? No, I can't sleep eight hours also. <laughs> I'm like, ha ha ha, chalo chalo, jaldi. Yeah, ma'am is a morning person. She's yeah. very excited in the morning. So yeah, that is there. So but let, let's see, ma'am. We have some. So this is about humans, right? And we have something very very special, ma'am. What we have, ma'am? Do you? The question actually is: Do you think animals sleep? Because we have a concept of sleep, uh, right? What about animals? I mean, of course, dogs, cats. We have pets as yeah, well. Yeah, yes, All of us pets. have pets at home. Or if you have a pet at home, you can tell, right? The way they sleep. It's going to be very different, right? Somebody telling mom, I'm an owl. That means they're not sleeping properly. Oh, oh yeah. Basically, we always say, mom, we are a night owl. Basically, babe, we are a people who stay late in the night. Yes, 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 yes. They do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, if you haven't pet animal at home, I'm sure you have seen. You would have seen sleeping. Yes. So there are some interesting facts about some animals, like bats. Oh, little brown bats. Can you see? They look very cute. I don't know if you have seen the real picture of bat. Bat. At least from a distance, they look very cute. And when they close come, they yeah, they can tell it. <laughs> But they're still very cute. They're very amazing animals. They play a very important role in our ecosystem. So yeah, lots of love to them. But they can actually sleep up to twenty point five hours. Super lazy, I guess, right? So mm. see, they are saying, "Mom, super lazy bats." <laughs> Everybody is saying, "Mom, bats have so much time to sleep." <laughs> yeah, they don't have to. They don't have to go to school. They don't have to study. They don't have to learn about biology. Yeah, <laughs> they are just sleeping. But another very interesting thing is there are some animals. Actually, ma'am, a lot of them are telling when you said, "No, ma'am, 
are there can we sleep 24 hours a day they said no, no but they were talking about some other animals which have the ability to sleep for longer times and one such example is that of the snail right ma'am okay like can you believe that snail can sleep or i would say that they can actually hibernate for approximately 3 years so that means that they are not doing much of the activities, right ma'am? Yeah. They're just there, static. Exactly. So they have, it's almost like they go into like a dormant state. Hmm. And now we have this idea of hibernation and estivation, right? And we know what is hibernation, estivation. Yes, one is winter sleep and one is yeah. summer sleep. And it's not just in snails that we see, but we see in so many other animals also. They go into a dormant state, especially when conditions become very extreme. Yes. You can uh, tell one example. I can see, I think on 6, 7, and 8, one or two of you have mentioned about it. Polar region, yes, polar bear. Right, very good. Right, so polar bear goes there. Of course, we have our favorite lizards also, right? During winters, you will not see them. But in the summertime, they will be coming from yeah. everywhere. So these are all some examples. And as a matter of fact, when you talk about snails as well, like ma'am said, ma'am gave you some examples, right? Of how there are some which do only hibernation, yes. some which only do estivation, right ma'am? And normally it's with respect to the temperature that is there. Yes. But we have such interesting creature, land snail. They actually sleep up to three hours in both, right? So that's very good, a very interesting information. This information was kind of new to us also. Yeah. We were like, oh, three hours, right? Good uh, amount of time. Exactly. And the thing is, in summer, right? So snails have shells, which is a very, you know, characteristic thing about them. When you think about snail, you think about their shell. Now, in winter, what they do is they actually go inside their shell and they hide. Yes. But when in summer, they actually don't do that. They remain outside itself because the shell actually will reflect the sunlight and most of their body remains protected in this manner. So this is one extra fun fact for all of you. Okay. Now, ma'am, with this, I think we'll move on to fact two. Yes, fact two, I'm sure it'll be very interesting. Okay, everyone, I think all of us nowadays are a master because we have so much of technology and yes. we learn so much day by day. So here, let's talk about the fact number two. But before that, uh, can you share these smileys, right, ma'am? Let's just yes. ask them. Right? In the chat, everyone, do share uh, these smileys of different, uh, let's say most ma'am, we'll tell them the emotions. Yes. And we will also try our best to have that emotion on our face. So now you have so many in emojis that are there, so yeah. we will try to do that, right? So everybody's yes. already ma'am sending the happy smiley one. So, yee. Then there's one with the peace. Yeah, peace. Uh, yeah. But uh, that should be like very static face, like not. Okay, now you can send us some more. Angry one, I can see. Not exactly angry. Yeah, we can't be angry around yeah, each other. We, we can't be because yeah. we have tried it a lot. Like in the during the poses, also we'll be like. Mm, yeah, that's why you only see us power posing our way through. It's because we can't see. Because we can't see at each other, and then we're like. Mm, see yeah, we, we can't, can't be that. angry. <laughs> uh, we can do suspicious, right? Well, suspicious is easy. We done that. Yeah. Suspicious is very. Easy. Expression yeah, but we'll so still laugh. We can send hearts. Yeah. Ha, hearts. Hearts. Like this one, ma'am, this one. Oh, yeah, one. this one. This one. Ha. Mine is not proper, but this one. Ha. Now, there's... Oh, you guys are sending... See, there are some emojis which we can't... That stone face ha, and all, we can't make... Can't. How we'll make that face? Uh, we can have some sad face. Ha, the thinking one we already did. Uh, sad face, ma'am. Oh, they're doing dabbles. Dabbles? Dab dabble, but it's not a... Like, we'll not be able to see the expression. Yes. Uh, sad is easy. Like, disappointed. Yes. Can you see us as how disappointed we look? Oh, how do I don't have yeah. to be disappointed? <laughs> yeah, like mm. it comes in the flow. Yes. So, but basically, what is the reason why we told you all of this? Is because of this very reason. Yes, that humans, right? Like us, we are the humans, and we can actually create up to up now seven thousand different expression altogether. Now, of course, this number can go up and down. Yeah. In different, different, different places, we have different information. But that's why we're saying approximately this much, right? Yeah. Just imagine how many different expressions as an individual we can give. Just yeah. think. Yeah. If somebody is like, what the, how, what the, what the heck, like, is it really yeah, possible? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we were also quite surprised. As a matter of fact, it goes up to 10,000 expressions as yeah. well. And, but the thing is, like what ma'am said, no, smiling, angry, sadness, fear, maybe contempt. These are all some yeah. basic expressions which are there. Which is why ma'am, when you look at the emojis, right, most yeah. often they're not more and more emojis keep coming in. Because those are all the different expressions, non-verbal forms of communications that we have. Yes. 
So if I just look at mom and mom is smiling, I know she's happy. And during our call, during the sessions also, we have a look at each other and we know what the other person is thinking. So, so we have a lot of expression that actually help us to communicate with the outer world. And if you are a student of the drama, right, if you are a active participation, if you play plays and other things, you will learn that there are more and more expression there. Yeah. And that's how, you know, um, they actually allow you to have those expressions. So yeah, it's, it's not very easy to do that. But yeah, as a human, we do that on a very regular basis, but we never realize that what expression we are actually giving. So next time, everyone, I think that could be a homework for you. Yes. If you don't have anything, tonight, stand in front of the mirror and try other expressions. Exactly. And as a matter of fact, it makes you more expressive as a person, right? Now, the reason why when you're in class and you know maybe the teacher is angry or when the teacher is, you know, very happy, it's because you're able to detect all of these things. So try it out. You can try it out now also, right? See, this is a very simple class like we already told you. We're just giving you some interesting facts, not very heavy, right? So now, of course, moving on with this to fact number three. Oh, fact number three looks easy. Yes, fact number three is a very easy peasy fact. It's a very scientific fact. It's very yes. bio bio wala fact. Okay, now what we would want you all to do is, we know a lot of girls and boys are here, right? All the girls use, uh, I'm going to use some neutral colors, right? All girls use purple color hearts and send it on the chat. All the boys that are here use green color hearts, right? Yes. To tell that you are boy or girl, right? So we have gender, right? Boy and girl. That's how we identify individuals. So everybody send us a lot of hearts. Is it purple or green? See, I'm not using the cliche pink and pink blue. And yeah. huh, so I'm going with purple and green. Purple, purple. Oh, so Many purple. purples. Feel proud? Yes. Yeah, so many. Oh, now some greens are coming. More purples and greens. You see a lot of green in 9 and 10, a yeah. lot of purple in 6 to 8. Yes. Awesome, everyone. Very good, very good. Keep it going, everybody. Keep it going. Now, as you are doing this, I hope all of you are hitting on the like button also. <laughs> yeah, please make sure you hit the like button, everyone. Yeah, we forgot about that. And subscribe. Yes. Okay, so we know that a lot of boys and a lot of... Basically, ma'am, when we talk about individuals. Yes. At birth, we are categorized as boy and girl. Yeah. And we call this as sex determination, everyone. So this is a very important topic. Ninth class, the new in the tenth class will be learning this. And eighth class, ma'am, they have an understanding about it. And ninth yeah. class also. So the gender of the humans, right? We uh, in the humans, we actually understand of that get decided by the chromosomes. So we say that in females, we have X and X chromosome. X chromosome stands for, basically we have it in the female. And the egg is the gamete or the germ set. So the egg will have the X chromosome. In male, what they have, they have the sperm. So the sperm can either have the X or can have the Y. And based upon that, the gender will be decided. If it's X and X, it will be a girl. And if it's X and Y, it's a boy. So we can say that the sex determination in humans is very easy, right ma'am? Yes. It's based upon the chromosome. Exactly. So XX or XY. Exactly. So it's chromosomes or it's the genetic material. Now the thing is, not all organisms have this kind of a mechanism, right? Now there are some animals where it's not decided actually per se with the help. Now yes. it's not, I'll not say genetic material at all, okay? Genetic no. material it's is there. involved. But it's not this X, X and X, Y, which ma'am explained, right? It's something else, yeah. right ma'am? It's the temperature, everyone. Yes, I'm sure you would have studied it somewhere or the other. Or maybe you would have heard it. If not, now is the time to look at this interesting, amazing information. So in around, uh, we have different types of reptiles, especially if you talk about, right? So what happens, their gender is decided by the temperature. So they will be laying the eggs, right? Based upon the temperature that they get, if they are in a warmer temperature, or the mother is sitting there and providing the body heat excessively. So of course the temperature will increase, 
from that we'll have more of female and yes. opposite of that ma'am will be males so around 31 degrees right above 31 degrees every egg will become a female but if it's below 20 i mean around below that range right so around 28 degrees around that time it's going to be males so here sex determination happens through temperature, temperature. so like ma'am said it's mainly in reptile so i'm sure see lot of nine standard ninth and below everybody is impressed and sir it's a ma'am Yeah, we know this. Manner, we know this. Yeah. We we studied this. But others, you have an edge over. So when you come in tenth standard, and when they tell you this, you're like, "Arey, Ankita Baba, I should have. I'm already told us this. This is nothing new." <laughs> yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, so interesting question. Does snake? Ah, uh, sorry, snake. I'm snake. I'm saying. Yes, they do have skeleton. Yeah, when I was also a kid, I used to believe that snake does not have skeleton. They're like, "Ha, huh, they're a flexible body. They're just muscle." But snake do have skeleton. Yes, and their vertebral column is very flexible. That's why they're yeah. able to, you know, slither like that and go. So they actually do have that. Why not in humans? Humans, what are you saying? Why not in humans? We have skeleton. Yes, yeah, of yeah. course we do. But I think you're asking why not temperature dependency in humans? Huh. Because we have the concept of sex chromosomes, which is why that is the case. Yes, very good. Now, ma'am, we will move on to fact number four, right? Oh, this is something very interesting, I guess. Yes. So now we're going to. So were you all able to hear this? Baby is crying. Yes. Oh my God, Mom, I'm going to cry. Very cute baby. Yes, very cute baby actually. Okay. So now, of course, right? How many of you? I'm sure most of you would have seen small babies, right? Maybe under a year or six months, you would have seen babies would be crying, right? Most often they're not babies. They can't really talk, but they cry. Now right. the thing is, Mom. I'm sure many of them would. How many of you would have noticed this? Mom, you can ask them, right? Yeah. How many of you have noticed that there are when they cry, right? Yeah, they usually cry without the tears. Now, can you tell us a reason? Now, of course, there's a biology over here. What could be the reason that they're crying but there are no tears? Yeah, we sometimes we call. See, if an adult is crying and there are no tears, we call them crocodile tears. Yeah. Yeah, we call them as like, ha, huh, no, don't be a crocodile. <laughs> you're crying but you, there are no tears but over here in human especially when we are developing right we have special glands right so we have we have a tear gland so they are not developed at that particular time and they'll develop gradually when of course our growth is happening that is the reason right ma'am yes and now another thing is a lot of you were saying ma'am they keep crying a lot right <laughs> now see when we cry of course yes. over time right our our response so as we grow older and as we develop as children and as where all of you are you're getting a your brain is also developing at this point which means you are getting a more sense of understanding about your surroundings right there are things that inflict or that cause pain to you right so when there is pain or when we feel that right our response to it in some cases is to cry it out right when we feel bad when we feel sad or when there's pain yes sometimes there are some people who even though they want to cry they may not you know cry it out as well yeah but over time that's when we cry right that with multiple reasons of course but for babies they don't cry because they are sad right not like us if i am sad right now i may cry but the thing is for babies that's their way of communicating because they can't speak and they have different cries also right yeah. different ways in which they try to communicate to say that they are hungry or they are happy So sometimes even when they're happy, like they try to make sounds, sounds and everything, yes. just to tell that you know that's their way of communicating as well. Yeah, and if you have a smaller baby around you, I'm sure you you would have seen they will be like making weird, not weird. According to them, there's a very good language they are speaking, but yeah, we might not understand that that language, but they're trying to communicate with us. So of course, if you pay attention, there are different types of cries altogether, and the different sounds that comes. So if some, if usually the mother. and the father can easily identify what a baby needs so that's how you know that's how the communication happens and there's one more thing right interesting ma'am that you know the babies don't have the vision they the vision of the babies initially is very blurred so they actually have a very strong nose and they can sense mm. their mother that's why if you just hold if the, if the mother is holding the baby they'll be happy the moment the baby is 
given to someone else or it's on the bed the baby will start crying yeah interesting ma many of them are saying why is it that when babies are born they cry the first thing that they do when the baby is born they cry mm. now the thing is see interesting when the baby is born and is out in the world see so long the baby is inside the mother's body right which means nutrition most importantly oxygen right is coming from within the mother's body yes but when the baby is born and the lungs are you know basically it's out in the air the lungs start to work right yeah. and when the body starts to function properly as a result of it they cry which is why when the baby cries it's the good sign yes that that actually show, shows that the baby is active and the body is working properly so when they cry because their mouth is open i'm sure you have not seen a baby who's crying without their mouth closed so basically the air is moving and that's how the lungs will actually start functioning so all of these interesting thing that we have in our human body and see from 6 to 8 see we all have been into that phase just remember that <laughs> it's amazing that how our body works yeah So okay. now, of course, we will move on to fact number five. See, we are not ignoring some people. See, yeah. somebody, somebody is asking me, "What is the motive of this session?" This motive is very simple: to learn some facts. Very light session. Ninth and tenth have board exams going on. Very heavy, heavy classes coming your way. So, if at all you are in ninth, going to tenth, it's just for you to, you know, breeze in a little bit, right? And for six to eight, nobody, we are not ignoring you. Chat is moving quite fast, which is why, you know, we are. not able yeah. to take up the comments now a very very amazing fact that we're going to tell you now is like mom said right all even the babies are born their vision is a little blurry Blurry, right yes. it takes time to you know get fine and of course over time our vision becomes really good right it's almost like hd ultra wow. vision but of course if you don't take care of it then sometimes we may have short sightedness long sightedness like us right <laughs> <laughs> both of us have short sightedness <laughs> So now, of course, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take a wild guess that Agatha Ma'am also has spectacles of watching too much TV. Yeah, I would say that. Yes, even even me. <laughs> yeah, I was in my class tenth when I got my specs. Yeah, I was in class five when I got my spectacles. Yes. So <laughs> coming back, we know that we're able to see things around you because of the eyes. Ma'am, what is the shape of the eyes? Why don't we ask the kids? What is the ah. shape of the eye? Because everybody will tell this is the shape of the eye. Yeah. Look at the shape, right? And then look at the eyeball. There are two different things. Shape of an eye and shape of an eyeball is different aspect. We are trying to, you know, mentioning over there. Yes. You are seeing, guys, ma'am. Look at this. Thank you, blue skies, ma'am. I think they are telling it to you because I'm wearing specs. My eyes are not visible. <laughs> <laughs> What is the shape of the eyeball? Streamline. Okay, it's like a streamline. Spear. Yeah. Very good. Curve shape. Spear. Circle. See, we gave you the clue by telling you it is. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, we gave you a very big clue. And so we can see it over Someone here. Someone is telling circle. See, three D, three D. Go, don't do two D, three D. Papi has now moved to ninth and tenth. Welcome. <laughs> uh, finally, you are there in class ninth. No, you were there in class eight last year. Yeah. No idea. Who's there? Okay, no idea. Oh, that's sad. No, not sad actually, but it's sad that we can't uh, give them the hint properly, right, ma'am? We should give them more hint. No, but I think most of them have got the yes. answer. Yes. Yeah, see, this is the shape of the eye, which is teardrop-like. Somebody is telling streamlined. There were lots of you into biology. Someone is saying leaf-like, almond-like also. Almond. Oh, actually. Yeah, alm almond shape is a type of eye, right? Yeah, almond shape is a type of eye. So actually, very good. But since eyeball, it is spherical. Now the thing is, we have something called as uh, peripheral vision, right? So, for example, if I am standing like this and I want to see Ankita Bam and Ankita Bam wants to see me, I don't need to turn my head, no? Yeah. I can just look at her like this. Yes. So, ma'am, you should not turn your head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you you turn your head. Oh, little bit. Okay. Yeah. I can see Ankita Bam like this. Little yeah. bit at least. At least we know that we have a next person who is coming yeah. next next to us, right? And that's what happened, right? For example, if you're writing something on the board, you will focus on the sentence, but you can still see the above and the below line, right? You can still see the lines that are there. So, of course, we have this amazing vision. We have focused vision, and of course, it's the peripheral vision. Yes. Now we can do that, but there are few amazing animals with a very, very great vision, ma'am. Right, ma'am? Yes. Ooh. So these are beautiful animals. We have owls, right? So we know that owls, of course, have very good vision. But what is the most fascinating thing about the owl? Can you tell us what is it? What is the most fascinating thing about the owl? Apart from that, they can rotate their neck three hundred and sixty degree. Okay. 
Ma'am gave the answer. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. The other fact was right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. So, ma'am being the leucosaurus she is, <laughs> has given the answer. That we know that owls have the ability to turn their heads and it's a movement like this, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah I love the movement. Like they will yeah. do like this. <laughs> please don't, please don't make this into a... <laughs> no. Yeah. Yes, everyone. We're not giving you any ideas. Yes. Now the thing is, if you see, right, owls actually don't have spherical eyes. They actually have tubular eyes, right? Or cylindrical eyes, we yeah. could say. Which is why they don't have that ability of peripheral vision that we do. But instead they need to turn their head entirely. An owl will never look like this. An owl will always have to turn, turn and see what is there. Yes. So as you all know ma'am, I think we can roughly draw and show, yes, right? ma'am. You are there with us. So, <laughs> draw. so our eyeball will look something like this, okay? I hope I'm drawing this fine. Yes. Yes, yeah. Our eyeball is going to look something like this without the details. But if you look at theirs, right, it will look something, it looks like a fungi. So it looks something like this. They no? had a, they had a little bit cony side yeah. at the back and of course the front. So it's not, it's not exactly the one that we have in our eyes, right? Yeah. So they have, and they cannot move their eyeball basically. In, yeah. In a, in a layman language, if you have to say, they cannot move their eyeball. So that's why they just turn around and that's the power they have. They can actually turn around back also. Yeah. Scary owl, yeah. And a very cute owl also. Actually, yeah. this owl is very cute. They, they look very cute. If you, I hope that you have seen their babies. Owl babies. So it's cute. Even the Harry Potter owl is very cute. Yes. Hedwig is very cute. Yes. Yes, but we also know that there are owls, of course, we all know from Harry Potter. If you've all been reading Harry Potter, watching Harry Potter movies, I'm sure you'd be able to know that, right? Snow owl, yes, you can say, but of course, species-wise, we're not going into the details. Now, moving on to fact number six. Okay, this is interesting, right? This is very, very interesting. So, if we have to ask, oh, um, I was about to ask you who will be our ancestor. Oh, but it's okay. <laughs> you can still ask, ma'am. <laughs> okay, if, uh, can you tell us who are our ancestors? Yes. It will be an interesting question because I think the, the common answer... It's like, who do you think is our ancestor, right? From where we evolved. Nobody is getting ignored, Apoor. But I hope that by calling out your name, you feel that you are not being ignored. That should not be the case. Yes. Monkey, monkey, monkey. Okay. Godzilla. Sorry, Godzilla. Trupti yes. giving heavily technical terms. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hmm, somebody is telling ma'am, closest is chimpanzee. Chimpanzees, very good, yes. So, it's not technically monkeys, right? Yeah. Primates, okay, fine, you can give the answer, right? But actually, the closest that we have is chimpanzee. Yes. So, everyone, so we are, the next fact is related to something very close to that. So, we have this very cute little animal. It's called a hyrax. Okay? Hyrax. hyrax. Now, this hyrax is also commonly called as a rock rabbit, all right? So this is also commonly called as a rock rabbit and it's a very small furry animal that looks like that, right? Kind of like a huge guinea pig, okay? Yeah. It's found in some rocky areas. Fine, cool. Now, who do you think it's most closely related to? This rodent here, right? Or this huge elephant? What do you yes. think? I can see mouse, 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 yeah. For everybody who's giving comments to me, thank you so much. And if you feel that way, hit the like button on the video. Yes. Yes, everyone. Please make sure if, if you think that we are doing an amazing job over here. And if you think that we have an actress ma'am over here, please make sure you hit the like button. <laughs> Many of you are saying mouse. And few of them are saying elephant also. I like Gungun's comment. Ma'am, it looks like mouse. But I know that you'll think that's the obvious answer and I think it's elephant. Oh, nice. Very good. So I think, see, that's what we... That's what we love about this channel and I think that's what you will agree to. Whenever we have come up with all of these sessions, right, um, that, you know, whenever we discuss about all of these, we always tell you to question yourself. Yeah. We always ask you to think about in a logical way and not the practical way. Question is something that you should ask, you should be keep on asking to yourself so that you can come to a good conclusion. Yes. 
So as you all know, right? So when you talk about this, in this case, as much as you will think that it looks resembles closer to the rodent, it's actually closer to the elephant. So now in this case, when we talk about this, right? Now the elephant that is there. Now what is common between a hyrax, which is also called as a rock rabbit, and what is common between an elephant? Yeah. Now the thing is, along with this, there's also another animal called a manatee. Yes. Manatee. So you can all go and you can have a look at it. Yes. Very cute animal, right? Manatee. Just very, very cute. So just go and check it out. You'll be surprised that you know they are they are very close enough. Yes. And the thing is, they all come from a common hooved ancestor. Okay. Yes. So they come from a common hooved ancestor. So their feet that are there, they're all very common. Even the fact their incisors that are there, right? Yeah. It's a little pointy, pointy. and sharp, kind of like, like the tusks also. Yes. So all of these things are very common. So yeah. Interesting fact for you to go back and check. Yes. So now in this case, as we all know, this was about the hyrax, which is the closest relative to elephant. Yeah. Surprising, no ma'am. I mean, size. Yeah, look at the size. Yeah, so much size difference we have. But yeah, there are no issues. Yes. Okay. Fact number seven, everyone. Yes. Oh my God, something someone is saying. My giraffe, my sister giraffe. <laughs> oh, nice. I told my ma'am, you look weak. Thank you for the concern, but I'm not. I'm perfectly fine. It will take some time for us to recover. Yeah. <laughs> but both of us will be fine. Thank you so much for the concern, everyone. See, your love and your support is what keeps us going ahead. Yes, I was. Let's move ahead and we have oh this. See, I will not say anything about this fact because we did that. We yeah. have discussed this so many times, right, ma'am? Yes. How many of you know about the tardigrade? We all know about the tardigrade, right? How many of you don't know? Ma'am, elephant is an oversized rodent. You can't say that, okay? Elephant is not. Elephant is a very majestic animal, as a matter of fact, right? Yes, but very majestic animal. But rodent is not something we will refer to it. Yes. yes sort of sir, very popular demand. He'll come soon. <laughs> you met sort of sir yesterday, right? Yeah. He's here only. Many of you are saying, ma'am. Uh, I know. They know. They know. They don't know. I know, but I like that. Like I like that comment. I know, but it's weird. <laughs> it's a bacteria, okay? It lives in eyebrows. I hear eyebrows. No, no, it's not like that, right? Fungus. See, it's a very old animal, right? Found way back millions and millions of years ago, right? And it was found in amber. It was actually found preserved. Yes. And it still survived. Actually. Tardigrade are one of those organisms which have the ability to survive extreme conditions, right? So they're known for their survival skills. Yeah, and a uh, lot of theories are there, you know, that you know, if we send them to uh, outer space, they'll still survive there also. Yeah. So yeah, interesting thing too for us, and because because of these conditions, right? Because of the the way that they can be in under high pressure under the water and very extreme temperatures. A lot of scientists are working on their body. They're trying to understand that how they can survive these extreme conditions. Yeah. So that if we can understand from there, and we can actually incorporate in upcoming years if we have to travel outside of planet Earth. So yes. It's super amazing, right? Exactly. So here it can, like somebody is saying, it can survive lava too. Exactly. High temperatures. It can go without food for a long period of time. It can survive oceanic pressures also. So this right here is a very, very, you know, its survival skills are really good. And apparently, I did not know this, Shagun, but thank you for telling us if that's really true. Apparently, NASA has declared this the strongest animal. We were not aware about it. We'll yeah. surely check, but that's very interesting information if it is. giving word. <laughs> it is present in water, right? Yes. So, we you'll usually found them. Yes. Um, so, you can see how... See, you know, initially, if I, if I remember, I thought that it's a, actually a machine made by humans itself. So that they can actually travel and then do some research. But by looking at this mouth, it looks like a camera, right? And yeah. It has a camera. Look at the tiny legs, ma'am. Yeah. They're very small. See, they're not like... See, when you talk about the size of it, it's very, very tiny. Right? It's a very tiny organism. It's not one huge organism yeah. also. It's a very tiny organism. Okay. They're saying floating CCTV. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can. We can do that. Okay. Moving on. Oh, they're also calling it a vacuum <laughs> Oh, nice. It, that we never thought, but yeah. You guys are very creative. We now we are, we are very pr proud of you. Very proud of you. Okay. Very in demand, huh? We'll tell sir. Okay. We'll now, call him. But I think his sir has a session now, so unfortunately. Yeah. Actually, no. 
Yeah, yeah, actually no, right? So we'll, I'll go aside. We'll yes. So now moving on to fact number eight, right? So what is there in fact number eight? Now we know about lizards, right? We all know lizards are called chipkalis, no ma'am? Yeah, chipkalis. Chipkalis. And now ma'am only was telling someone me they'll all come out, right? Now whenever we talk about this, I mean, have you all seen that sometimes lizard ka tail will get cut? Yes? Okay. Are planaria eggs? Planaria, <laughs> yeah, but everybody's already good. 10 standard students would like, ma'am, this is syllabus mein hai. This is not very fancy, right? Yes, ma'am, we know this. So we know that regeneration is a process wherein different parts or parts of the organism, or in the case of planaria, like which the 10 standard students have learned and learned over and over. We know that regeneration is a process where a part of the body can be regenerated. That means it can be regrown. And this is because of certain specialized cells that are there. And we know that due to the presence of these specialized cells is why they are able to regrow it. Now, how many of you know about neurons, right? How many of you know about what are neurons? Can you all tell me very quickly? Yes, yes, starfish also has the ability to regenerate. But before I go ahead, right, how many of you know about what are neurons? This is very simple. Ma'am, this is intense on a syllabus. Ha, ha, it's there. Little extra Brain stuff. Cell. Very good. Yeah, they're the nerve cells, right? Now, did you know that if I take a neuron, and if I take a skin cell, right? Now we know that cells have the ability to divide and make more of themselves, right? Now the thing is, skin cells have this ability. But what about neurons? Do you think neurons have the ability to divide? Yes or no? Okay? Yes or no? In this case, neurons, will they divide or will they not divide? Yes or no? Very good everyone. Please write your answers. Because in humans, we know that we don't not we don't see the repairment of the neurons in our body in humans body the growth and the regeneration and the repairment of the neurons is not there exactly which is why you have a f actually when you're born your number of neurons are fixed and they cannot further divide which is why any impairment to your nervous system any impairment to your neurons actually re relate to a lot of you know uh, you know, diseases like, for example, Alzheimer's and everything that is there, right? Neurological diseases are probably one among the many reasons is the fact that they are not able to, you know, regenerate. Yes? On your popular, popular demand, everyone, Saurav sir is here. He'll be coming just in a minute. But for the lizard wala part, you all know that, of course, they regenerate. And when I was sitting there, I don't know if you have... Now that we are in a world, now that we know that, I'm sure you would have watched a reel. A reel where they're just the people are just making reels when they're they're saying that now the chipkali season is back. Is it? Yeah, because I you know seen. they are just coming. The winter season is gone and the lizards are there because it's summer season. Yes. So yeah, that's a very see, you know what? The science is everywhere. If you start looking around, you'll be able to see that. So observe everyone. Yes. And finishing off my neuron point is the fact that starfishes can regenerate their neurons as well, which most organisms don't have the ability to. Yes. Because the thing is, in most organisms, we cannot regenerate their neurons, but starfishes have that ability. So that, along with ma'am said, is an extra point for all of you. Yes. Yes. Now, for now, fact number nine. We'll call all of sir. Yes, to enlighten. On a, on a, on a very special demand. You have a second fact, no? No, no. Second last fact. Yeah, second last fact. On a special demand, we called, sir. I went outside the session and then we have invited him. So everybody, we need you all to clap and hit the like button. Yeah, everyone, please make sure you hit the like button. Sorrow, sir, is here. Hey, by the way, who called me when Lizard was, topic was on? <laughs> Many of them have called you when, when that time. Yeah. People came to me and said, I don't know Lizard, you're going to call Lizard. What is going on, man? What is this? Hey, good afternoon, good evening, good evening. Yes. I'm good, I'm good. After so long they're saying, yeah. After so... Yeah, I was like, Kali to mile the? Kali to mile the, yaar, am log? They're having FOMO, not seeing you, I think. Don't worry. I thought biology facts were going on. Ha, physics, I'm big. We had a question on ice, we were like, ha, physics padha rahe bio teacher. I was about to comment when you were talking about tardigrade, no? You uh -huh. were saying it's a very tiny organism, so I was about to write tiny and then use it. <laughs> <laughs> But then I stopped. <laughs> I'll come and then you will. But sir <laughs> has publicly announced it in a live class. So so the next one, actually the next fact is related to a little bit on electricity, sir. Uh -huh. So I think it's good that you are here. Oh, yeah. Nice. So did you know that our brain actually produces enough electricity to light a light bulb? Is it? Yeah. 
How many of you knew this? So how much electricity? Like for example, there are experiments where they keep it on apple and all. No. Yeah, potato mm-hmm. ka experiment we did. Ha, potato. Potato ka is fine. Yeah. Yes. Apple also they keep and they do this. But our brain also has the ability. So do you want to guess why? I mean, what I guess is all the you know commands that we get in our body. So because of electrical impulses, right? Change, yes. exchange of ions and everything. Yeah. I am. I am partially there. right. I yeah. feel. <laughs> no, right? not partially. You're fully You're right. You're fully right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very Anna? good. Yeah! Everybody, lot of claps. I didn't know about this, by the way. इनको लग रहा होगा मैम ने बता के भेजेंगे. No, नहीं, actually, नहीं, this नहीं. is the most unplanned thing that we have done today. Yeah. <laughs> so how much, uh, en- like, how much electricity would we need to power a light bulb? I think it depends on what kind of light bulb because the bulb right now we have on screen over here, it's an incandescent bulb. It's more like a hundred watt or इसके लिए तो खैर we need a lot of electricity. छोटू सा bulb like that. छोटू bulb light वाला. LED is a fine. I mean because those uh, point like one Daniel cell will give you about point nine volts of electricity. So around three point six volts you need at least this much potential difference you require. So let's see. किसी का है खाली दिमाग थोड़ा. We can we can uh, you know. Try this on. Zero <laughs> bulb. These people will say it's easier to get mine because you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just came in the wrong foot, huh? <laughs> so hey, everybody. <laughs> Very easy, please. <breezy>. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So a lot of them are saying it's a zero watt bulb, neon bulb. Zero watt, well, zero watt. Hota nahi hai, by the way. It's Haan. just a thing we call it like zero watt bulb. That's n- nothing is like zero watt. What is this? Zero power. वो जीरो वॉट होता नहीं हां हल्का सा एकदम डिम लाइट में रहेगा या लाइक इट्स वेरी लेस पावर बट नथिंग इज लाइक जीरो वॉट वी यूजुअली कीप इट इन मंदिर लाइक इन टेंपल्स वी यूजुअली हैव दैट लाइट रात में भगवान सो रहे हैं फिर हमको करंट क्यों नहीं लगता करंट आपको क्यों नहीं लगता बिकॉज़ लाइक एवरी कमांड यू आर एबल टू रेज योर हैंड यू आर एबल टू डू दिस थिंग बिकॉज़ ऑफ यू नो ऑल द इंपल्सेस गोइंग इन योर बॉडी सो एज सर एक्चुअली गेस्ड इट राइट वी हैव इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वी हैव केमिकल सिग्नल्स आल्सो या and both of them are there and of course we have that enlightenment right right ma'am we can say enlightenment kya bol rahe hain sir ki yaad aa gayi chipkali sunkar ye kya matlab hai ji tube light tube light bachcha it depends like we used to have jo pehle aati thi na jo neon wali aati thi tube lights the the big ones jo ki aise jo uh, action heroes they used to come in movies with like boom boom that was 40 watts by the way nowadays we have led tube lights which is like less yes yeah Oh thank you. Nay they were saying you're a big fan. Oh thank you. So now of course we will move on to the last fact and I think so you can help with this also this is regarding functioning of ear and sound as well. Yeah so yeah. So a lot of physics. Yes I listen a lot in this team so yeah. <laughs> I can talk about this. Brain needs 0.05 seconds to recognize any sound. Hmm the persistence of sound huh? So you know sounds are sound is nothing but vibrations right and we are able to easily Uh, we are able to easily you know recognize the i mean we are able to easily perceive these vibrations right because of the ear drum and then of course we have sensitive cells inside which will convert the vibrational energy mm. to chemical signals and then electrical signals which is then sent to the brain all of this which takes 0.05 seconds so fast nice. right by the way kids this is not the persistence of sound okay that is something how long a sound remains in your uh, ear or you can say it kind of remains in your brain so this is about to recognize the sound to ye galti mat karna ki jab hum echo ka derivation karte hain to sir 0.05 kyun nahi lete that's 0.1 okay actually so it remains in our mind yeah. for like ha so one basically uh, two sounds distinctly you can only uh, differentiate if, if there's a difference of around uh, 0.1 second oh okay interesting yes So of course with this everybody we are done we are 10 facts out of which last two were all related to electricity and sound and we had a special with sort of sir and on popular demand we called you him also i feel like whenever we do these generic sessions the after some reason like we call sort of sir <laughs> yeah for so on popular demand and i okay there's one thing that we have to address tanish ko 9th and 10th see don't worry see what is past is past don't worry about your marks right i think uh, you have been you know you have been writing this comment for a long time really sorry we took it now because we were just thinking that you know we'll end the session and then we'll address it but don't worry it's just the marks it's just the examination keep on hard working you will see amazing results it's just the one examination you might not get good marks that you were thinking you will you might not get 80 out of 80 but you will have good marks so don't worry about it 
Yes. yes. And everybody don't. See, we come up with these classes only because we know that you have a lot of, you know, sometimes jam-packed schedule. Yes. Whether it's in 6 to 8 or 9 and 10, you know, you're... Like with exams and everything, it's very jam-packed. So we try to keep it light so that with everything, there's always an academic outcome. You always learn new things with us. But at the same time, you can also relax back, laugh a little. And after just watching 45 minutes of a class, you've learned something new. Yes. And now, yes. this information you can actually share with your friends. Spread the knowledge, everyone, so that you will remember this information for a longer duration. Like how Saurabh sir says, you can show off wherever you want to go. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, it's okay. Yeah. See, this is not just for class 10 students. Wherever, whatever class you are, no, it, it, you always feel a little setback. A number is not coming. I'm getting these kind of thoughts. Mommy is saying something. Papa is saying something. Sister is saying something. Friends are saying something. It's okay. See, I think that's the time where I think you should have a little bit of thick skin. Yes, brother, you're coming. What are you going to do? You tell me. Right? अगली बार देख लेंगे क्या फर्क पड़ रहा है क्लास टेंथ इज नॉट द एंड ऑफ द वर्ल्ड यार आई एम टेलिंग यू कितने लोग मेरे साथ के ऐसे हैं जो क्लास टेन में शायद बेरली पास हुए हों इस टाइम पे ना बड़ा अच्छा अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं एंड वी फील कैंड ऑफ अच्छा इतना बड़ा आदमी हो गया कि सो दीज कैंड ऑफ थिंग्स हैपन यू डोंट नो अबाउट लाइफ तुमको लग रहा होगा आज काम खत्म लेकिन यू नो वॉट कमिंग ईयर्स वट एवर यू वॉन्ट डू जस्ट फोकस ऑन दैट एवरीथिंग एल्स इज जस्ट नॉइज यार रिलैक्स कुछ नहीं हो रहा अभी लाइफ खत्म नहीं हो रही ठीक है चिल मारने का एकदम ये Sink me, I come. We all got you covered. So with this, everyone, we'll end our session. Please make sure six, seventh, and eighth graders, Ashwara ma'am, have another session with you guys at seven. At, sorry, six p.m. Right, <laughs> few minutes after that. And please make sure you join that session. Right, the yes. Lord trusts you. Right, it's a mentee quiz, and you have all the subjects, especially for seventh graders. Now I'll also join. Yes. With my original name. Yes. Original I'll name. Compete. Yeah, with my name, Ankita. Oh, okay. Uh, ma'am, but ma'am, please do tell me all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody with this we'll be signing off we will see you all soon up until then take care lots of love and bye bye yes. bye everyone bye, -bye. and keep on